Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedasp.net. In my previous video I explained about the delegate keyword and I promised you that in this video I'm going to uh, show you how to use a better approach with the C-sharp delegates and that's the action and the func. So let's get to the code and see what action and func is all about. If you missed my previous video I suggest you first watch it before coming back to this one because the basic delegate keyword is the fundamentals, uh, fundamental knowledge of the func and the action. Okay, so using system is where the actions and the funks are. So if I want to use the action and the func, I want to use the system. First, let's start with the action. If I analyze the action, I will see that it's a void delegate which does not receive any input. If I see what kind of actions I have, I can see that ha I have action that has 16 generic parameters. I doubt you are going to use that version of the action but the normal ones which have two or three parameters are very common. So let's first see the normal action. The normal action allows you to save a void method which does not have any parameters. It's a normal delegate. It's just built in for us. So if I uh, if I write down some test, I will see that I can create an action which is the sum method. I can also add something else to this action, and then I can invoke invoke it like a normal delegate. And if I run that, I can see that I see test and else. Okay, the action is essentially a delegate representing void methods. So whenever you want to use a delegate without a return type, you should use actions. And if you want your method to have parameters, you should use the generic versions of the action. So, for example, if my method has one int parameter, I will, use, I will use action of int. And the same is for the same is for the one the expressions. I will need a one int parameter. And that's it. As you can see, it works. So essentially, in order to use the action delegate directly, you will need to recognize how many parameters the method has and use the corresponding action version. For example, if we have the following signature, this will no longer work, but I can say that I want an action which has an int string and bow parameters and I want to save that method in that action, it will start working. Of course, this one the expression is no longer valid because when we if we want to save a method to this delegate, we need to have an int, a string and a bow. So essentially my one expression needs to have three parameters in order for the action to work and when I want to call it I need to provide all the parameters. So that's essentially how actions work. So actions are built-in delegates which allow you to have void methods and up to 16 parameters. Up to 16 is good enough. Now let's see the func. 
The func is almost the same, but it has a return type. So in the funcs, we need uh, to have a non void method. And that's the whole uh, rule here. Void methods are actions, non void methods are funcs. But before I show you the func, I want to thank my sponsors. As you may already know, I work as a CTO and a lecturer. I'm teaching C Sharp and JavaScript technologies. And in my free time, I create open source libraries like uh, these. Most of them are for the ASP.NET framework. For example, this library is Fluent Testing Library, allowing for easy assertions and strongly typed assertions. That's important for various parts of the ASP.NET Core web applications. For example, controllers, services, models, database, cache, session, and many more. These projects have been developed for more than three years now, so you may find them useful. And uh, in order for me to be able to develop these projects, I started a Patreon and an open collective page where people can become backers or sponsors. And I'm very happy because a lot of people contributed already. And if you decide you can contribute too, I will be very helpful. If you like my videos or my projects, that's a great way to help me. The current company sponsors are Softuni and Smart IT. Thank you guys, you're great. Now let's continue back. Let's get back to the code and continue with the funks. In order to use funks, the funks have the following rule. The last generic parameter is the return type of the method you want to save. For example, if I have a method which is public static int some method and that method does not re does not uh, receive any parameters in order to save it in a func i will need a func of int why it's a func of int because the last generic parameter currently is the only one represents the return type of the method so essentially that's how i'm going to save this method. Of course, I can do it with a lambda expression. A method which does not have any parameters and returns an integer is essentially func of int. And if I write console write y, write y func, I will see that it will write 42. Cool. Okay, next. Uh, you may have noticed that you cannot write it, it didn't write uh, 42 twice but I saved some method and this lambda expression to the func why it's not returning 42 twice because you cannot return multiple values from a function and that's why it returns the last result both methods are called, but only the last result will be returned. So this func will print calling, here it is, and it will print the, it will return the last return, the return value from the last method. So essentially we called everything, but we received only the last return value. Okay, uh, how to save methods that receive parameters and returns a value? Easy peasy. The last generic parameter of the func is the return type. The first are the parameters. So if I write string, because the first parameter is string, and then if I write bool, and then if I write int, I essentially say I can store methods which receive two parameters, string and bool, and return integers. 
and as you can see it works but in order to use it I will need to provide the string and the bow and I can see calling test and 100 and let's try another one if uh, for example I want to save a sum func I can do it hex and y goes to hex plus y hex and y so essentially func of triple ints saves functions which receives two integers and returns an integer and that's the following function and then if I decide to call it and say give me the result of 5 and 10 I will receive 15 cool if you have a class you can use the class too for example action for example action of cat cat action equals cat goes to cat dot same meow and essentially that's a function which will call same meow on the cat and if I create a cat and say that the name is my tested ASP.NET don't name your cat like this boys your cat won't recognize the name and then I will call cat action with that cat and I will get meow if I want to use it with a func I can say okay I will use a function which receives a cat and returns a string cat func and that will be a cat which goes to cat.name for example that's a function which returns the property name and if I say cool cat func let's get the cat that will receive the name of the cat okay guys that's what that's all you need to know about action and funks you need to remember that actions are methods which don't have a return type void methods and funks are methods which have a return type and you save the parameter types in the action generic parameters and you save parameter types in the func generic or generic parameters but the last func generic parameter is the return type of the method and from now on you can use functions and actions and as with normal delegates you can pass them around you can pass a function here and I can call the func here can print the result and if I call the calculate method with cat goes to cat dot name I will receive the name of the cat or not uh, I will need to print the result here it is and if I call the same function I will receive another functionality so essentially I'm following the open close principle here I'm adding more functionality to this class without 
opening it without changing it. So this class is very, this method is very abstract and I don't need to change it to add new, new functionality. That's the open close principle. If you're not familiar with the solid principle guys, let me know and I will make a video about them. So we saw how we can use functs and actions. You can pass them around to your uh, to other methods and they are quite useful. Yeah, the syntax is a bit strange at first, but when you get used to it, it will do you wonders. You will really like how your code is starting to work and it becomes more functional and more cool. Okay guys, that was it. Again, if you like my videos or you like my tools, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, star my projects or become a sponsor on Patreon or Open Collective. Thank you very much. Bye.